you've developed yourself into the person that has the skill sets to hold success. You've figured out a lot of the mistakes that slowed you down. We've developed enough relationships at this point, if you haven't burned them all, that everything clicks at one time and then the explosive growth happens. And you found a model or a business or an industry that you know that works for you and also works for what you're trying to accomplish. This is not a quick process. It's like putting a puzzle together. It takes a long time to turn the pieces over off the side, but as the puzzle goes together, there's fewer pieces to put together over time. So it accelerates how fast you're putting each piece of the puzzle together. And that's why don't look at time, just look at activity. And as long as you just keep putting pieces together, at some point you're gonna get that puzzle together. Well, welcome to a new episode of Real Estate First Technology. I'm your host, Norman Kinsey. Our co-host, Mr. Dan Gandy, is not available today. I want to go ahead and encourage you all to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'll love a review of our podcast as well. I can't believe we're almost up to 350 plus episodes. And a big thanks to Liftoff Agent for sponsoring our show. Now, have you ever thought about uh, who is the number two agent at EXP? Well, we might just have that individual on today's show. Uh, we actually have the number two agent within EXP. He's also the founder of the Wolfpack and has over 3,300 agents worldwide with his organization. The one and only Connor. Welcome to Real Estate First Technology. Super excited to have you on the show today, man. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? And thank you for having me hey, on the show. Hey, man. We're, we're doing good. We, we appreciate your time today. And uh, yeah, man, you guys are crushing it with EXP all over the place. And I think uh, I was, I saw some stuff come up with Kobe. I was uh, actually on his show. He was on our show. We did an IG live yeah. and uh, I've been, I've been seeing you online. You've been crushing it. The Wolfpack, everything that you're doing with that. And we had Mike Schroer on a while back. And so yeah. let's get into your story, man. It's, it's going to be awesome to get deeper into all things that you've done to just absolutely lead by example in such a big way with the organization, but why and how even real estate to start, man? Yeah, I kind of had one of those fall from graces and kind of rise from ashes uh, comeback stories. So uh, I, from really? Dallas, Texas, I went off to the University of Oklahoma back in 2003. And as okay. a freshman in college, uh, the online poker boom happened. So I was sitting in my freshman mm. dorm and watched Chris Moneymaker uh, win the World Series of Poker. And he did what was called a yep. satellite tournament to get his main event seat in there and to win a $10,000 okay. seat and win the main event. And every oh, college wow. kid's head in America was like, uh, my mom gives me 40 bucks. My dad gives me 40 bucks. I can do this too. And so the big yeah. online poker boom happened. And what happened was it, it lowered the barrier of entry to go to a casino. You had to start out with X amount of money. You had to go mm -hmm. to the casino, time to do the cards, very slow. Mm -hmm. And so I started playing on the internet for pennies and dollars and tens of dollars. And then eight years later, I was one of the top online poker players in the world. And I did that for a living. And then what happened was on oh, April wow. 15, 2011, uh, we had that Black Friday, which was mm -hmm. when they shut down the U.S. Department of Justice, uh, shut down the big poker sites like Full Tilt Poker and Poker Stars. And so imagine guys building a skill set that you had one skill set, took a, almost a decade to build, and you went to sleep one night, and tomorrow you woke up and it was gone. It would literally oh be if you guys God. are in real estate, they said, turn in your rental properties, turn in your real estate licenses, and pretty much that's what happened to me. <clears throat> so then as a young kid, I was uh, too young and too naive to not know that good things don't last forever. And I made yeah. some bad mistakes, and that was on what's called tilt. And I was on a mega tilt, ah. I guess, if you understand the analogy. And I basically yeah, yeah. built one. Windstar Casino up here at the border of Oklahoma, Texas, because I gambled off the rest of my money on blackjack and craps. And before I knew it, I went from sports cars, diamond watches, thousand dollar nights at the bars to uh, living in my sister's old bedroom, moving back home with my parents in my late 20s. And it was a very wow. tough time for me. And uh, I waited for a couple of years for online poker to come back. Some of my friends were moving out of the country. Some were trying to pirate stuff through IP addresses. And it was, it was just a crazy mm. world. And then I realized yeah. it was never coming back. And so what happened was, I started playing live poker a lot during that time. And I started to notice patterns in business about pattern recognition, because when we study patterns of the past, we can exploit risk in the future and make better decisions. So I started seeing mm. wealthier, older individuals that had time to lose a lot of money, but also a smile on their face. And when a poker player loses money, they look like they want to jump off a mountain. And so I was like, what do these, what do these guys do? And I found out they're all in storage units, built real estate businesses, something like that or big, yeah. built big real estate teams or insurance teams or something in that in that arena. And so mm -hmm. what I realized was uh, I'm going to have to start a new path in life. So I decided to go into the insurance space and into real estate investing at the same time. So I was watching some of those uh, late night infomercials on like how to get mm -hmm. into wholesaling houses. And then I got my insurance license at the same time. So I joined a company called World Financial Group, which is WFG, which is where Ed Milet's from, where he yeah. built his initial business. 
and I uh, started building a small team over there. And then at the same time, I was wholesaling houses. But what I realized was I just didn't really like the insurance space and I was more gravitated towards residual income and I wanted to build mm. a rental portfolio. Now at this time, yeah. I sucked into one of those uh, stage selling gurus and put up like 35 grand. Before I knew it, I was like 100 wow. grand debt. I made every mistake in the business and mm -hmm. it got a pretty dark mm -hmm. moment for me where I saw no path out and it got to where I almost took my own life as bad as that sounds, but I'm trying to inspire oh people to tell them you can go from the lowest, darkest point in your life to wherever you want, as long as you control your thinking. And what happened was at yeah. the same time, two things happened for me. I had walked away from my faith for a long time and I came back to it. So that was one thing. And at the same time, I stumbled into personal growth, self-image building and personal education. And so I came across wow. a book called Think and Grow Rich. And uh, Love I first it. came across, yeah. So basically what happened was I came across the black and white recordings of Napoleon Hill. And that led me to Think and Grow Rich. And then that led me down to this aggressive path of personal education. I started reading books like As a Man Thinketh, Richest Man Babylon, traditional ones like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And before I knew it, uh, I had consumed hundreds of books and podcasts and all sorts of stuff like that. And so wow. I was basically running out of money. And uh, this is an important lesson for young entrepreneurs. We live in a world where information is free. It's just the time to sift mm -hmm. through it. The internet's here. And so I was watching free YouTube videos, teaching myself how to build WordPress websites and do SEO and internet optimization. And I built the number one house acquisition websites in Dallas, Texas for some of the biggest keywords. I literally was typing uh, city pages and all sorts of uh, unique individual <laughs> content until my hands were like swelling. So I taught wow. myself all this from, from uh, YouTube for free. And so I was able to start generating leads on the internet. I started at wholesaling houses and then I went into flipping houses and I started building a rental portfolio. That led to creative financing. I started creating owner finance notes and selling notes. I did mm. uh, land deals, mobile home deals, and I mm -hmm. became pretty successful in the investment space. Now, along the way, I was kind of paying it forward to the industry that helped me because a lot of individuals on uh, YouTube, I was watching people like yeah. Sean Terry back in the day, Cody Sperber. Not sure if you've had mm -hmm. them on the call. And uh, so I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. So I started posting videos and I created a YouTube channel called Investor Army. And it took off at one point. It was like a top 10 YouTube channel in the country for investing. I haven't been too active right. on it since the pandemic days. And then that's kind of what that channel led to the conversation with Mike a little bit later, which we can get into because he was watching my YouTube mm. channel because he was representing investors up in Calgary. He was learning about investing, watching my YouTube channel. But what happened for me was ah. I was a full-time investor for six or seven years. And over and over and over, as, as I built that channel, a lot of people started reaching out to me about, have you heard of eXp? And I kept blowing people off for like two years. I kind of just kind of put it in the back corner, wouldn't let anybody mm -hmm. kind of give it to me. And then what happened was I was speaking at an event in uh, Mississippi. It was an owner financing conference. And the number one leader at our company was speaking at that same event. And I got put into a speaker's property with them, like a little Airbnb. And I stayed with the number one person in the world for like three or four days. And it was kind of wow. like a Wolf of Wall Street scene where he's like, <laughs> uh, you know, that scene where he's like, you show me that you're making 72K a month. I quit my job. I work for you. And I was like, Rob. If you prove to me you're making over six figures a month and a reoccurring income stream with no debts, no tenants, no toilets, no vacuum management system, and all I have to do is get a real estate license and leverage the platform I've already built, I'm going to go get my real estate license. I'm going to do this with you. Let's so go. that's kind of what happened. And I ended up getting a real estate license. And here we are six years later, uh, 3,300 agents selling tens of thousands of houses. And uh, I mean, I condense it down. I can go into a lot more detail. On yeah. But, um, but that's pretty much what happened was I, I started out. I uh, had a fall from grace, had a poker career disappear without my, out of my control, led me to a very dark moment in my life. Personal education got me out of it. And then I went into the investment space first, but I saw patterns when I was in the insurance space at WFG of team building that I took yeah. later toward the, uh, the EXP model. And I learned some skill sets that over there that transcended, which were very valuable. And then social media created leverage and attention that built a lot of relationships. And then I just identified EXP early on and put the foot down and never kind of let off. But that's pretty much how we got here. Wow. And uh, there's a lot in between I can go into, but uh, that's that's kind of just a bit. Wow, I, I can imagine from the first time you said that and literally seven minutes, we got the whole story. And I just love how, how eloquent you, you say what you say and you're very intentional with what you're saying. And talk about high highs and low lows, but then just getting back on your feet and doing whatever it takes to just make it happen. Uh, congratulations, first and foremost, to all your success. For our viewers and listeners out there, you know, you know we got a real one here, someone who is you know, talking the talk, walking the walk, and is just making big impact to so many people out there. So we really do appreciate your time today, Connor. Um, that's amazing, Thank man. You. So it's so now it's like 3,300 agents with the EXP downline. I mean, you're there. The residual income, I mean, 
you can go sit on the beach and have my ties if you want to, but I love how you're still giving back. You're still showing up. You're still on a show like this because you're still that authentic, true you that want to give back yeah. and serve and support and keep on going. So where did the, where did the intention of the Wolfpack come along? Like the, the logo, the thought process behind it, how that, how that come about for you? Yeah. So, uh, so in the beginning days of EXP, it was just kind of crazy. It was like the wild, wild west. There wasn't a lot of yeah. synergy. There wasn't a lot of teamwork and cross uh, value propositions and mutual mm -hmm. exchanges of abundance, anything like that. So it was kind of, I mean, there wasn't even company slide deck presentations back in the day, which is as crazy as that wow. sounds. And uh, so when I came in, I had an upline partner line that I was, if you guys understand how these business models work, I, we have a seven tier growth model. And I was really kind of helping build the brand above me. And then what happened was not to get too deep into it. There was a, there's kind of a divorce at the top of my organization. And uh, that led to a weird situation with that, obviously. And at the same time, I was also getting kind of beat up by a policy that our company had at the time, which was, I don't even know if it was a policy. It was just the systems weren't there yet, where you just had to sign up with an application link. And then there was like a three to five, seven day window before they sent what's called the IC or independent contract agreement. Now this window of time, right. you guys remember back in the day, uh, the ICA is what commits you. Now it's sent all at once. So this tough type of stuff doesn't happen, but there's companies, yeah. brands and teams inside the company ahead of us, some big brands. And let's say I'd work for months to try to bring a partner or a group of agents over. Well, when they mm -hmm. come to EXP and they make that commitment in their mind, what did they do? They call everybody and text mm -hmm. everybody they know, say, I'm coming to EXP. Now what would happen during this time was somebody would reach out to somebody that was already at EXP and they'd be like, I'm already here. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. Did you sign up? And so it's kind of like this black hole window where these people already had a value proposition. I was fighting with, you know, a paper, a paper knife, essentially I had nothing to, to offer as value. And so I was losing mm -hmm. to some of the bigger brands and I realized, you know, it, this is uh, survive or, or thrive. And the only way that I'm going to uh, kind of fight this long-term is if I go up against this and I build something long-term as far as a value proposition yeah. that can rival what I'm up against currently. And so mm -hmm. one of the biggest brands in the company, uh, not to market for them, I'm not going to name the name, but they're also an, <laughs> an animal. And so what I saw was that, uh, you know, traditionally real estate names were, you know, the Connor Steinberg team or the Johnson group or something like that. And what they had yeah. was a name of a brand around an animal. And I saw that that was something unique that was different. Now, the second thing was I wanted, or first of all, I wanted to have an animal that would stand up a head to head with that animal long term for one. The second yeah. was I was I, out of Plano, Texas. If you guys look at my high school on the internet, I went to Plano West. When I played sports, we were in the Wolfpack. Mm -hmm. So we always had this mentality, let's run together, win together, let's do as a pack, not as a lone wolf, which is kind of the Love essential that. mentality behind what we do as a group here. And so I kind of took that there. And then uh, the idea that, you know, that we're, uh, you know, going to create a, a team that's global, that's based off the same value proposition and just uh, kind of a, so what the Wolfpack is essentially, if you guys are not aware of it, it's a, a collective group of agents that share in a partnership compensation line that we exchange podcast or not podcast mastermind calls, training courses and things like that. So mm. I had the brand uh, that I knew I was going to compete against. I came, yeah. from, came from high school, which kind of gave me the name as the idea. And then, you know, the mentality behind it. Now what's kind of crazy is three years later, I had no idea. Uh, so I guess I'm part Irish. Someone in my organization three years later told me what that means. And I looked up on the internet and my name stands for lover of wolves in Irish, which is kind of crazy uh -huh. uh, that I had no idea when I, I came up with that. So that was kind of crazy, but uh, that's kind of how I wow. came up with the name. And uh, what I started doing was first I started creating training. So I started a mastermind call. Then I started creating training academies, uh, created a YouTube training academy and agent traction course. And I just started valuing are levering up the value and creating more value propositions on top. So each year mm -hmm. I built off of what I built off the year before. And over time, this attracted better and higher quality partners. And uh, that's yeah. really essentially kind of how we got off the ground. And then um, I can go to this further uh, any direction you want me to go, but uh, that, that's kind of how I came about the name. I was, I was getting beat up by this pre previous bands and that uh, previous brands. And that's kind of what led to that. Wow, that, that's super amazing. And uh, yeah, we'll go deeper here in a second. But it's amazing how, how I don't know, I feel like everything in life happens for a reason. It happens to you, not for, uh, it happens for you instead of to you. And I love how you went through that process and how just the writing was on the wall through that process. And just to kind of segue before we go deeper into the conversation from playing poker and where you were at that point to your life to now where you're at with the Wolfpack and how you're serving, how's the feeling? How, how, how does it, how does it feel? Can you even compare the difference? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's good. <laughs> I mean, it took a lot like of work more to get feeling here. now doing what you're doing now instead of like being behind a card yeah. table. I mean, I'm just curious personally. Oh, for sure. 
Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. So like, you know, the, the poker world is a transactional uh, strategy. So there's three different ways you can expand your net worth. You can do it through time trader active income or time traded income streams. You can expand mm -hmm. your net worth through equity models or through some type of reoccurring income system. Now, most mm -hmm. of the world can never create wealth because they have a limitation of the hours they can work in a day in a lifetime. So sales yep. is flipping houses, wholesaling, selling real estate, a nine to five job. These are all time traded income streams. You can make a million dollars a year working a W-2. If you're the right company, work your way up. You can do it through sales. But as soon as time stops, your income goes away completely. So what wealthy yeah. people understand is equity models and reoccurring income streams which is, for example, like equity, the expansive nature without time allocated to make it grow. Let's say I bought a rental property and I got hit in a car wreck and I went to sleep for 12 months and I woke up and the markets had risen by 10%. What did that mean? It means I was sleeping, but my net worth grew. It expanded. And then if you think about Amen. the duplication component, having multiple rental properties, what if I had 20 rentals and that same market force, just one market force went up, the compounding effect across the duplication system and the equity expansion is really how you create wealth. And then the last one is reoccurring income streams, uh, meaning you trade your time for once, you build something that has continuity to it behind it, and you can build off mm -hmm. of it, meaning there's no floor that you start from day one and zero every single year. So I was flipping houses, making good money. I was playing poker, making good money. But if I was tired, if I was sick, if I had a life liability, children, grandchildren, taking care of older parents, many things come up in life yeah. that take our time away from our business and create extra stress. And so, uh, you know, what I'd urge you guys that are young and coming up in business is trade active income time, meaning time to day to create a lifestyle that's moving forward in time, meaning mm -hmm. you know, flipping houses, selling real estate, but also on the side, start buying real estate or building a team that has a reoccurring income component or finding some other passive or residual income model, because that's what's going to give you time and money freedom later. So there's a huge difference between making half a million dollars a year playing like poker or something versus having yep. half a million dollars a year from a, a rental portfolio or something like that, or any other reoccurring income stream. One is a money income stream, one is a time and money income stream, because if you have to work every day, all day, you're tied to that income stream. And so yes. really passive or residual income streams are, are your freedom. And so I kind of urge young people to go into that. But, um, you know, the, and then ultimately, like the main thing I try to tell people is like personal education is crucial. When I went up through college and high school, I hated reading. I was like the kid in high school that had to take a bathroom break. I'm not even kidding, guys. Like every single class, we had like eight classes, they were 45 minute classes. Every day, every class, I was trying to take a bathroom break because I, I didn't want to be there. Wow. And it wasn't because I didn't understand wow. education. I didn't think it wasn't valuable. I just knew what they were teaching me was not what I wanted to do. It was teaching me yep. kind of how to go down the employee route. And then later mm -hmm. in life, when I came across personal education, I realized it had a direct impact to the lifestyle and the future that I wanted. That's what brought me back into the avid learning. So some of you guys that hated reading back in the day, you might not when it comes down to creating the future that you want. And then also your journey in entrepreneurship is about the process of becoming who you are as far as a self image on how you see yourself. It's not about the income that you have. I know there's a lot of successful people out there that have huge incomes I've met and there's kind of two different buckets. Ones that are very miserable, hate themselves in every way. And then ones that have, yeah. you know, look in themselves in the mirror at night when they go to sleep. So two different people go to bed at night at the same time. They're both looking in the mirror. One has a bad self image, one has a good self image. And it's the one that built this, built their business ethically, honestly, with respect is the one that's going to look at themselves with respect. And then there's others that cheated and scammed and cut corners and, and hurt, hurt people on the way. And so the thing I guess I'm most yeah. proud about is I took a little bit slower route in the beginning because it wasn't easy. It took me like four years to get out of debt, working almost every day, but I, I never screwed anybody over. I never cheated the system and I built an honest business and honestly looking in the mirror at night, that's the biggest reward because I knew I didn't have to, I didn't do what a lot of people did to get there, which I've seen a lot of people do on the way yeah. up. And then the money I've had it and lost it. <clears throat> so I had all this stuff once. So I had all the toys, all the watches and like the saying, it's like, is this better to have it and lose it to never have it all? Uh, yeah. that's not true because I had it and lost it mm -hmm. and it sucked and it sucked bad. Wow. So what I realized was when I had all those things and I had the stuff, that's not what made me happy. So money is, you guys hear probably the cliche analogy, it's an amplifier of the person of who you are, but having yep. materialistic things is good. Having money can solve problems quickly, but also when you get to a higher financial situation in your life, you're going to have more problems, uh, different types of problems. So it never really goes away. And what I realized, and for you guys right now, looking in from the outside, if you can take one message from me is no matter when you're at rock bottom or if you're on top, your emotional patterns controlled by the controlling of your thought process. And so your thoughts cause how, are, are directly related to how you're going to feel in your body. So if I told Norman right now, uh, called him and said, Hey, your best friend just died in a car wreck. He's going to take that thought. He's going to feel that thought emotionally. He's going to break down, start crying. He's going to feel it in his body. 
his heart rate will go up, the tears will come out of his, uh, out of space, right? But then I come back and say, bad April Fool's joke. What that means is the thought <laughs> triggers the emotion in the body. It has nothing to do with the reality of what's happening. And this is why belief issues and self-esteem issues are incredibly important because if you believe that you're something, you're, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you don't have the money, you don't have the time, it's because you're in school or you have a family, those belief issues cause the way you feel and the way you feel cause the way yeah. you act and the way you act creates everything around you. And so what I realized when I was at rock bottom was, especially after coming across thinking a rich and following a lot of great mentors, Bob Proctor, Les Brown, Earl Nightingale, was that I realized yeah. I wasn't thinking and that my problems weren't because of everything around me. It wasn't because of God, government, partners, family, friends, the bird outside. It was because myself, my incorrect thinking process. And I put myself in the spot and it really was how I was approaching the world. And once I realized I wasn't thinking, maybe I should start trying to think a little bit to control my thinking and then think mm -hmm. myself out of my problems. And so I really started putting, uh, so someone asked me the other day on different podcasts, when did I know that I was going to be successful? Again, it's when I put my goals on pen and paper and decide I was going to be so. That's what I told them. And I yes. wrote everything down on pen and paper uh, for the most part that I've achieved. And so what you need to understand is nothing in the world can come without a visualization process. So a painting on the wall cannot happen unless you see it first. So you can't just paint a Mona Lisa unless you saw it in the mind first. You can't show yeah. up at the destination you want to go to. Let's say, Norman, I said, meet me at the house. Where is he going to meet me? He doesn't know the GPS location. He needs the GPS. Exactly. He needs the address. And so your brain goes through uh, everything as far as a manifestation process goes from an intellectual process, an emotional process to a physical process. You've also heard Napoleon saying, whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. So the, the conceptual thought, the intellectual process, you have to have the seed in the mind. It has to come from the mind first. You have to see the picture first. You can't paint something on the wall without seeing, you can't build a business without seeing it. And then whatever you believe. Do you emotionally involve in something enough that you'll push past the risk, the pain and the suffering to go through and get it? Meaning, does your emotional involvement, does the belief, is it high enough, right? Because let's say, you know, you believed something you wanted really bad, but then risk comes up and you get punched in the face and all the problems start happening. How hard are you going to work if your belief systems for like a 1992 Accord versus a 2024, you know, Bugatti or whatever it is. So whatever you want, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's a family, a goal. The belief has to be there. And that's why Eric Thomas is like, you want it better than you want to breathe, right? And then if you have the idea, you emotionally involved in it, you can physically have it if you don't quit along the way. And so the only thing that stops you from your goals is you stopping. Every successful person, the only thing they have in common is they quit. And honestly, I wanted to quit along the way, like all the time. And I just said, if I don't quit, I know I'll get there at some point because I saw a lot of successful people. And I realized I was just like them. I was born with blood in my body, heart and goals too. And that they all can't be criminals. They all can't be trust fund babies. They all can't be drug dealers. Yeah. They, they, some of them had to get there. They're not all smarter than me. And, you know, I came from a normal middle-class family. I had great parents, but we weren't wealthy, but I never had to worry about like food or meals or clothes mm -hmm. in my body, but I didn't really have a hand up in life. And so I want you guys to understand it. It really is your, your belief system and the energy behind that and how long you, you, uh, stay on that path before giving up. And the giving up process is the difference of who gets there and who doesn't get there. And most people just quit way yeah. before they're going to get there. And it took me 1100 days of working to get out of debt. I think it was right around that. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about that, it's 1100 days, it's like three years. And how many young entrepreneurs get into business and they start something for three, six months and then they give up. And I try to yeah, explain to them, that's like, that's like, quitting you know freshman year of college you, you guys went to college for four five six years went into all this debt to potentially get a job to work for some other business owner to help their goals and dreams come true but when it comes to your dream for you and your future and your family and your generational line you're going to give up in six months that's like quitting as a freshman so stop quitting on yourself and stop bullying yourself a lot of people beat themselves up nobody likes a bully but they don't think that they bully themselves and every time you get on yourself for kind of messing up or doing something wrong. I made a lot of mistakes along the way, guys. I still make them every, every day I make yeah. mistakes. Right. And, uh, if you beat yourself down, all you're doing is slowing your path. But, um, I can tell you that anybody can become successful. It's a consistency process over time and your brain's uniquely created to do a couple things. It's a historical record of the past. So it's going to remember lessons that you've learned to take forward in the future through pattern recognition, but it's also a creation tool of the future that you can see what you want to create. And as long as you keep moving forward towards that direction and you don't pivot off and change the GPS coordinates of where you're going, eventually you're going to show up there. Some of you guys may take a year, yeah. five years, 10 years, but you will show up at the destination if you don't break that GPS destination uh, that you're going down, change it in your phone, I guess, if, if you want to look at that kind of analogy. 
I love that. I love that, man. Very, very powerful thing. So uh, go follow Connor. I mean, absolutely amazing content here. Comment below. What was one of the biggest takeaways? I feel like I feel like life is a lot. It's fun when you know what you want. It's fun when you know you want to go. It's fun when you're when you're striving for something and you're just like whatever one percent, a half percent closer to that end game and goal. Um, and a lot of the things that you rattled off, like every single night, my daughter's five, and um, I'm already starting her off young. Ever since she was first born, whatever your mind can't conceive, believe, and feel, it can achieve every single night, and you're gonna help millions of people. I've been telling that since day one, and she's now remembered that. And I love Napoleon Hill, think and grow rich and being focused and having the intentional purpose filled life is just amazing. So thank you so much for our viewers and listeners out there. I hope you guys can really take that in consideration and apply it to, to your life and, and to your business and going deeper into the Wolfpack and growing that from, from the beginning. So was it you and Mike Sherrard that started it together or, or how did that transpire? Uh, so I started the Wolfpack back in 2018. And uh, so Mike and I got connected later. So he came in, I guess it was during the pandemic around like 2020. And okay. so kind of how that relationship happened was uh, he started watching, I guess he was watching my YouTube channel, reached out to me. Mm -hmm. He tells mm -hmm. people that uh, I blew him off. Honestly, I don't remember uh, <laughs> when he reached out to me. And then what happened was actually later, uh, EXP is a global growth model. We're now in like 20 plus countries. And yeah. I was still not too familiar with the laws of kind of how that worked in different states and different countries. And I found out later that we could actually attract agents and build in Canada. And oh. so I remember going in and being like, so I can actually attract agents in a different country. Are you sure this is legal? I'm not a broker. And they're like, yeah, that's, that's okay. And so that's when I reached back out to Mike. And uh, that's when he kind of has a speech that he did on stage. And he sends the message that says like F off basically this time. And uh, <laughs> so like, then he kind of blew me off. And then what happened was uh, somehow we got back connected and we decided to do each other's podcast. So at the time, you know, my YouTube channel was a little bit bigger than his. And mm -hmm. he had, you know, maybe close to 20,000 Instagram followers. Now in the agent space, Instagram is a pretty big uh, deal, but in the investment space that I came from, it really is not too big of a deal. Not, I mean, mm. investors use Instagram, but not near as the comparison as I th I'd say the oh, agent yeah, world. Sure. And uh, I, I joked on this podcast, I think I said something like, you know, I didn't look good in a bikini, so I was never on Instagram. So I kind of really focused on YouTube. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, you come on my podcast, we'll talk about Instagram. I think it's still out there on my Investor Army channel. And then okay. I'll come on your show and talk about YouTube. So that's kind of where the relationship started. And then I kind of introduced EXP. He had already been blown up by quite a few people. And mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of big names had reached out to him, a lot of other alpha agents at the company. And he kind of blew me off. And uh, so I understood that he wasn't interested at the time, but I still saw a lot of value in him coming up. He was a little bit younger, a lot like me. And I was yeah. like, hey, let's start another business together. And so what I proposed was let's start a, a social media masterminding company. So we created what's called the social strategy mastermind. And what yes. this was, was a, a recurring mastermind call that we did live each week. He did one week, I did the next week, and we go for maybe 45 minutes and then open up for Q&A. And so we did that for like a year. And then along that process, what happened was he was able to, uh, I guess, see from his perspective that he could work with me and there was value and that I wouldn't, you know, like have horns on my head, like other people, people think, oh, they <laughs> XP, they're I mean, they're just normal people just like you guys. And yeah. uh, they all want to change their life too. And then also um, we just realized we worked well together. And then what was happening was a lot of people from the mastermind wanted to start coming over to EXP. And I was kind of like, look, dude, nice. I'm going to start, start sponsoring these agents if, if you don't move over and do this, you know. And so eventually he moved his license over. And, uh, you know, he'll tell the story. There's like, you know, the first month we brought in like 30 something agents on his first tier or something like that. I forget exactly how it played out. But he started getting me in front of people that he knew. A lot of the agents came in from the mastermind. And then it got to a point where we decided to shut the mastermind down. And then at the end of that mastermind, uh, when we did, a large number of our best partners and biggest leaders decided to come in because once the mastermind call is done, they had a choice to go back to their current brokerage and kind of go through that, whatever they're doing there or follow yeah. us over. And we said, we're going to continue the mastermind, uh, but it's going to be just for our partners. But that's kind of how that worked out. So we created a business the social strategy mastermind. And then that led to, uh, our partnership at eXp. And then, um, so I urge you guys right now. So like, if you're going to be at a different company, it doesn't even matter ours, but you're reaching out to someone to attract someone to your business model. Don't go in one, uh, like one narrow limited site process, meaning like if this doesn't work, then this can't work, you know? And so yeah. it was probably that outside thinking that proposed, let's have another business together 
that led to this now. And so, yeah, Mike makes up, uh, so about 2,200 agents of the 3,300 or something like that in the Wolfpack together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for sure is one of the biggest explosions, uh, that, that happened with us, uh, just, wow. but that's kind of how it all played out. It's just, it's just a testament to like, we, if we were work together, there's so much more you could do together than trying to be a part. And I get it, a logo, a branding, a legacy, whatever it is. And like, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole from the perspective of like the world. Like that's a whole nother conversation. But it's just like everyone's so segment intended with whatever their focus and their goals and their aspirations are with what they're doing that like they totally right. forget that like, hey, we're all humans. We all bleed. We all shit. We all like, we're the same. And it's fine. It is what it is. But I'm right there with you, actually. Um, you know, and this maybe could be something for off air. But I, I was reaching out to Mike because, you know, Liftoff Agent sponsored the show. And I thought there was some some synergy there and some stuff that we could work together on. And uh, we, we didn't have he was on our podcast and everyone on his and, and never, nothing ever really transpired, which is totally fine. He's still a friend of mine. He's a good dude. I, I love the guy. But uh, congratulations to both of you guys doing what you've done to get where you've gone, what you've gone and, and what you've done. Because you know, Wolfpack, you know, everyone knows the name. You're absolutely crushing it, which is which is huge. And it's sure. just a testament to like, hey, if we work together, we can do so much more things than being by ourselves. Yeah, for sure. And uh, like at our company, I mean, there's a ton of relationships I can see just in our company that are not even our group. I mean, some of y'all know uh, Girls With Grit. They come from yeah. completely different organizations and now they run a massive company outside. And then it's not even just within the same brand of a company, you know, outside of, you know, different companies, you know, at the time, Mike and I, when we were doing that, he was a different brokerage. So we were still building a business, you know, mm -hmm. a third party coaching. So I think a lot of people are, they're, they're limited and short sighted with their thought process on, you know, yeah. Hey, I'm using, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hunt this person. Right. And if this person doesn't do what I want them to do, then there's no value for what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's a very, it's a very, uh, selfish mindset is also one that repels people so communication yeah. is a transference of energy so when you're talking to someone it's not just the words you're saying it's the energy that you're bringing towards them and if they feel you know that you're coming too too aggressive you're going to run away but also if you don't uh, be aggressive enough you're going to they're going to drift away and so you know if the it's not always so communication is done in three different parts it's it's the words that you say the actual text or script and then the emotion or the tonality or the energy and the, de the delivery of those words and then the nonverbal body language communication I think mm -hmm. a lot of people in sales and especially agent attraction or anything that has a conversion that has to do with relationships, they mm -hmm. sometimes say the right things, but they come with the, the opposite body, the wrong body language and the wrong delivery of the, the voice in the, in the yeah. motion. They're not bringing the right conviction in the voice. And if people truly believe that you believe in what you're selling, they're going to believe in it too. And, uh, but if they think that you're coming from, you know, kind of like that politician mindset or like that attorney mindset, where it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah. I hear what you're saying but the tonality and body language don't match up to the words, it creates a incongruency of how it feels for that person. And they just get that ick, icky feeling. But when mm -hmm. people come from a true convicted nature and, the, and a sincere part of their, you know, belief and heart in what they're trying to accomplish, people feel that and they resonate with that. And it's infectious yeah. and people follow that enthusiasm, and follow that energy. So an attraction based business, people want to be around attractive people and they want to follow people that are going somewhere, especially right now in a tough market. They want to be around, someone that's you know like a leader that's you know gonna say okay i know this world's falling down around us but i'm convicted on where i'm going don't don't worry no fear the leader's here we're going this direction we're going to show up at the outcome no, no matter what when yeah. right now there's a lot of leaders you know getting eaten alive and they're terrifying everybody they're sending the wrong message through their businesses all sorts of industries yes. right now you need to understand guys that emotional control and emotional awareness have a huge relationship to relationships, personal and business, and also where you show up as far as success. And so I learned a lot of this in the poker world, you know, when you're bluffing or you lose a big hand, can you control your emotions after that? If not, you're going to lose a lot more money directly after that. So if I won a big hand or lost a big hand, you probably right. wouldn't know I'm sitting there stoic, <laughs> staring ahead, like, you know, like, and I think in business, people don't learn that lesson. So I learned a lot of emotional control and things like that early on in the poker world. Also, a lot of body language cues and tells on how to read people and how people sit up in a chair, how receptive they are, if I'm pushing too hard or not pushing enough. So one of the things I teach you guys or tell you guys to go learn is communication and understand body yeah. language and, and then understand the tonality and how you speak to people is going to have a direct relationship on how people react to you as you're speaking to them. Yeah, the, the, I mean, the whole science behind it, it's the, the psychology side of human connection and body language and if i'm 
looking at the camera, how much am I blinking? It all ties into the sincerity of the conversation. And am I here to, you know, really build a sincere relationship with you or not? And there's something to be said, I feel like when you just lead by example, as you're consistent and what you guys done at the Wolfpack, it's at lean by example. So your agents are having the success with then other people are being influenced by that success. They want to have the same success with then, Oh, well, how do I join a meeting or whatever the case may be, which ties in directly into the next segment, which if there's someone listening or viewing right now that wants to learn about the Wolfpack or join one of your meetings, just to kind of see the vibe and how it is. And, and maybe they want to make a switch, you know, how would they do that? We can put some links down below and what would you recommend? Yeah, I mean, the easiest way, just hit me up on Instagram, DM me. Uh, you know, I started putting a little bit more time in that over the past couple of years, and uh, I'm pretty easy to, to reach out to. I'm pretty pretty normal. Uh, That's how I we got him on the podcast. Least, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like I think, and also it's an important lesson because a lot of super successful people that I realized later as I became successful myself and also as I had some su- successful mentors, very few people reach out to mm-hmm. them. It's kind of like... Um, I heard something with like Cindy Crawford one time say she didn't even get asked like a high school prom yet. People would think that all these guys are asking her out. And really guys, if you just have the, the self-esteem and the, and the confidence in yourself to reach up to these successful people, you'd be shocked how many mm. people reach back down to you. And then uh, to, t- to talk back to communication, like in the business that we're in for sure in real estate and insurance, you hear scripts being thrown around and the words are important, but once again, it's the delivery. So let's say Norman, had, I cloned him and he had a twin and I gave them both the same script. And only one gets the movie role. One's going to be sitting on Hollywood Boulevard, growing a beard down to the waist. The other one's making millions. What's the difference? It's not the words. It's how the words are said and the delivery of the the motion through those words with the body. And so it really is a big part of uh, communication and business and things like that. So we go over a lot on that in our group. We talk about, you know, a lot of masterminds. We have uh, personal education, self-growth classes. We have social media classes, teaching social media on the different platforms. We have investing classes. So I run an investing mastermind where I teach you guys all the strategies, uh, you know, that I've done to build my business. We've got, you know, a, a big, uh, value proposition that we provide our partners. So I can kind of go over that with you, but, um, yeah, love it. I mean, other than that, That's I got really nothing else for you. <laughs> That's huge. No, this has been absolutely amazing and super impactful. Um, and as we get to the end of the show, we always like to, I mean, there's obviously tons of information, you know, go back, rewatch the episode, take some notes, definitely go co- uh, follow Connor. Um, but as we end out our show, is there anything specifically you're working on or a point you would like to leave our viewers and listeners as we close out today? Uh, yeah, I mean, so the, the goal is 10,000 agents. That's, that's the big goal. So currently right now, we're, you know, closing in 3,500 agents. Uh, so that's the career goal for that business. Um, and then as far as like a message to you guys, you know, like, I would not look at problems that you're dealing with right now as problems. I would look at them as solutions. So like a lot of people try to run from problems, but what do you do when you go to the, to the gym? You're, you're not trying to run from the weight bench, you're running to it. So growth comes from pushing against resistance and doing repetition. So two things that are gonna grow you as a person physically or mentally. You gotta go up to the point of resistance. And so, you know, a lot of people hear my story and they see the outcome now. And I don't think they realize like how, mu- how much I went through, how many struggles, how many late nights. And almost like I kind of missed that window of time, but there's no successful person that got there accidentally. It was planned. It was written down usually for the most part on pen and paper or seeing the mind first. And it was a, a sequential order of failing over and over and over for a very long period of time that you didn't see behind the scenes that now you see on the, on the surface that you see what you think you see. So it took me a very long time to get to where I was getting to. And for years, it didn't look like it was going to happen. I promise you there was many days where I was about to throw in the towel and it looked like I was going to go bankrupt. It looks like, you know, I ruined my life. And I just convinced myself if I just keep getting up every day and moving the ball one yard down the road every single every single day or one down, uh, one uh, yard down the field, eventually I'm going to get to where I'm trying to get to. So wake up every day, move towards your goals at some level. Some days are going to be great. Some days are going to be bad. But the only way that you don't hit your goals is if you if you don't keep moving forward. And so I can tell you, no matter how bad the future looks, sometimes the vision is is blurry. No storm lasts forever. You'll come out the backside and the, and the light's bright, but there's going to be a lot of dark days. There's going to be a lot of uh, incredible sacrifice during that journey. And really, I believe it's God or the world's test to see if you're deserving to hold the, to hold the torch of success later. And what, what you're going to look back at is those tough days. Those are the days that you're going to look back with respect for yourself. And everybody wants to feel good about themselves and look at the mirror and, and like themselves. What's well, the days that you wanted to quit and wanted to give up? 
that you push through. And that's what builds self-image. That's what builds the respect for yourself. And then once you respect yourself, others will respect you. And that combination creates long-term relationships that you can build a business with. And uh, so just never give up, keep going. It's not cliche. And uh, it's really the key to success is just don't ever quit. Just keep going until you get there straight up. I, I love that. And just to add to that, I mean, looking back, me personally, those tough times, I enjoyed them. I, I enjoyed not being able to pay the rent, you know, negative fees in the bank, about to get evicted, like all the things, honestly, and as crazy as that sounds, it's like they say, who cares about where you're headed? It's all about how it takes the stories behind what it takes to get there. And so, oh, yeah. so I, I love that. That was just reminding me of like a lot of stuff that you know went down in my 20s that it was just so much fun. And uh, this was so much fun, man. Connor, I really do appreciate your time today. And I feel like our viewers and listeners can definitely take things from today's show and apply to their business. I feel like this is just a little taste for our viewers and listeners of what they'll get if they were to go to one of your masterminds or check out a course you guys have. Go follow Connor. Go send him a direct message. That's what we did to get him on the show. So, dude, this is this is a pleasure. Yeah, man. And I 100% agree. Like, I miss... So once you kind of turn the corner, you look back and like, there, there's no more, uh, you, you lose the Rocky moment, right? You lose, yes. you know, the, the time, you know, it's like, you don't, you, you don't know once you're here, you know, you made it right. Now, obviously yeah. you may mess up and lose it. But, um, there's many days where I was like a plane crashing and I was watching my bank account go and it's like, I'm going down and it's like, I, I scorched the top of the corn crops and then came out of it. And then I kept going yes. back down there and it's like, I was going to crash over and over, but, uh, Honestly, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that like massive adversity in those years where let's say like I was making decent money right away, like 150, 200 K a year. That may have been too comfortable for me to go mm-hmm. through the massive sacrifice to do what I needed to do. But when you're in the crunch mm-hmm. time and you're literally up against the wall, like, you know, if I threw Norman in the pool and said, swim as long as you can and like literally swim as long as you can, he's going to swim for as long as he can. And then we're going to pull him out of the water. Now, if I took him in the ocean and put him on a cruise ship and threw him off, he doesn't know when a boat's coming. I guarantee you he's going to swim longer than he swam in the pool. And so some of you guys need more, you need to get hurt. You need some more problems. You need some more adversity. You need to be put up against the wall to force yourself out of a comfort zone to get yourself to change. And uh, for myself, I had to be put up against that for a long enough window of time. Now it was definitely not fun. And uh, now it's fun looking back in this, but so sometimes some of you guys are in a grind right now and I get it. It's tough. And you're maybe all alone at night. There's many nights I came home and stared at the wall and just questioned everything. And, and I know what you you guys are going through. You're on the right path and uh, just don't deviate from it. But uh, that pressure that you're under right now is what's creating the energy level that you need to survive. And then as soon as you, you, you have all this extra pressure, you're gonna put all this extra effort in that once you kind of come out, you come out like a rocket ship when you do come out. So there's a long tire, it's kind of like a seed, kind of wait to break through the soil. You can hear that analogy, and like a bamboo, yep. and then you just take bamboo. off. And really, yeah, success is not, like this, if you can see, I'm doing like a linear line. Success is like kind of like you go way down, then you kind of flatline, and then you shoot straight up like this, like a reverse U. When you really think about it, your survival first, which is you're trying to wash out, you know, you're you're losing money every single month. So that's the first stage of uh, of growth in business is survival, and you're going backwards every single day. You're spending time, money, and effort, and then you need to move into what's called stabilization, which is now let's say you're making eight thousand but spending ten thousand. Now you're spending nine thousand but making ten thousand. Now you're just, now you're not going backwards but you stabilize. So you have time, you can mm-hmm. breathe now. So you're kind of flatlining and then you move into like slight growth where now you kind of have a profitable year. Maybe you go back a little bit, maybe you make hundred K this year. And then you hit explosive growth because at this point, after three, five, seven years, you, you've developed yourself into the person that has the skill sets to hold success. You've figured out a lot of the mistakes that slowed you down, which is really what business is about is trying enough things to realize what doesn't work to do the few things that do work over and over. And then yeah. you've developed enough relationships at this point, if you haven't burned them all, that everything clicks at one time and then the explosive growth happens and you found a model or a business or an industry that you know that works for you and also works for what you're trying to accomplish. And so this is not a quick process. It's like putting a puzzle together. It takes a long time to turn the pieces over off the side, separate from border pieces to, you know, uh, corner pieces and then separating by colors. There's a barn over here and then there's a sun over here. But as the puzzle goes together, there's fewer pieces to put together over time. So it accelerates the fact how fast you're putting each piece of the puzzle together. And that's why don't, don't look at time, just look at activity because it's going to time is plays weird in the mind and weird in the world. And as long as you just keep putting pieces together, at some point you're going to, you're going to get that puzzle together. Huge man. Wow. This, this is absolute pleasure. And if you found value, (laughs) dude, go follow Connor. I, I love this. And, uh, 
definitely I'll, I'll be we'll have to have you back on we'll have to have you back on in a year and see how closer you are to the ten thousand agents and we'll have to talk offline because our goal at liftoff is fifteen thousand agents but we're a marketing agency we're not a we're not a, nice. a, a downline i'm not licensed fix and flip buy and hold those are other things i have on the side of my wife but uh thanks nice. again connor appreciate you being on yes sir thanks to all appreciate the viewers it. and listeners of course man to is our, is our intention for you to apply things to your business have more massive success please like subscribe hit that notification bell if you're on youtube new episodes every friday at 3 30 pacific standard time and uh stay tuned for the next episode with connor with the wolfpack exp and thank you all so much for tuning in today's episode